In November 2023, two of China's tech giants, Alibaba Cloud and Didi Global, experienced an epic technological breakdown. Around 11 p.m. on November 27th, Didi Global, a ride-hailing behemoth with over 500 million monthly active users, saw its app fail to provide normal services for both drivers and passengers. An emergency fix temporarily restored functionality by early morning. But the service collapsed again during peak traffic hours the next day, only fully recovering by noon on November 28th. The chaos was palpable among passengers and drivers alike. Some urgently needed rides but couldn't hail a cab, while others were swamped with four cars arriving simultaneously, unable to cancel their orders. Incredibly, some drivers received orders dispatched to locations over 2,000 kilometers away. The billing system was in complete disarray, with an 8-kilometer trip bizarrely priced at 1,540 yuan. Astonishingly, some drivers saw their back-end earnings display a balance of 69.3 billion yuan. How much money? 69.3 billion yuan. This 12-hour technical meltdown resulted in DD Global losing over 4 billion yuan in transactions, approximately 10 million orders, and even caused an internal network crash. In its apology, DD attributed the issue to a fault in the underlying system software. According to a technical forum analysis, the failure originated from an erroneous Kubernetes K8S version upgrade. The upgrade mistake led to all pods being unexpectedly shut down, triggering control node failures, and hindering normal system rollback, culminating in a service interruption that lasted 12 hours. Industry experts noted that while errors during upgrades are not uncommon in today's internet environment, Didi's real issue lay in the slow recovery process. The configuration of Didi's data center was crucial. With only a primary cluster and no backup, the upgrade was directly carried out on the main cluster, complicating rapid system restoration. In theory, reinstalling some machines could have quickly restored core services, but DD failed to do so effectively. Insiders analyzed that the company's non-core service links, which significantly impact the main process, needed to be restored before ensuring the normal operation of the main process, justifying the 12-hour recovery period. This suggests that Didi did not adequately isolate non-core links, leading to confusion during the crisis. Additionally, Didi's K86 service configuration was problematic. The service configuration specified particular host names or IP addresses, which, when services needed to run on different machines or environments, became inapplicable and required individual configuration adjustments. In a somewhat ironic twist, following Didi's apology, its coupon redemption page malfunctioned, failing to load properly. In November 2023, industry insiders expressed that the catastrophic failure experienced by China's tech giants was not unusual, attributing it to recent investment withdrawals by American firms. This led to the closure of prominent companies specializing in Kubernetes K86 development, leaving many skilled professionals, especially those over 40, unemployed due to age-related hiring biases. Given the current hiring trends that prioritize age over technical expertise, such system failures are considered normal. Also in November, the day after the Singles Day shopping event, Alibaba Cloud, China's largest cloud service provider, suffered a breakdown lasting over three hours. This led to a sudden halt in multiple Alibaba applications like Taobao, Dingtok, Goofish, and Alibaba Cloud Drive, disrupting the daily routines of millions and affecting Alibaba Cloud services across over 20 global regions from China to the United States and the Middle East. Students were unable to use laundry machines in dormitories as the shared laundry services relied on Alibaba Cloud. Additionally, people were unable to use direct drinking water dispensers or charge their electric bikes. In December last year, a cooling system failure in Alibaba Cloud's Hong Kong data center caused a severe outage lasting over 12 hours. Another significant incident occurred on October 23rd this year when Alibaba's Yutre platform experienced an eight-hour disruption. On November 27th, Alibaba Cloud faced another collapse affecting seven service regions. Analysts believe that recent technical failures at Alibaba Cloud may be linked to the addition of new features in the underlying modules and the failure of update processes, triggering existing issues in older versions. These problems have been accumulating over the years. For instance, during a Singles Day event, 
Alibaba Cloud tested its order peak with a large ERP software provider system, which collapsed, leading to order processing issues for two days. The root cause of these severe crashes during software updates is the high dependency on human intervention in the update process, compounded by Alibaba's ongoing layoffs. In the past nine months, the company has laid off at least 15,000 employees, mostly aged 35 and above, with annual salaries between 1 to 1.5 million yuan. These seasoned employees, who wrote critical code and guided younger staff in system maintenance, are irreplaceable due to their experience and skills. However, Alibaba's executives believe that by laying off these experienced workers, they could hire multiple younger employees who are more compliant and cost-effective. In reality, the older employees' expertise and leadership are invaluable, and their absence leaves younger teams struggling with complex industry issues. The remaining employees witnessing continuous layoffs have shifted their focus from work to job security, with some contemplating serious discussions with their superiors. Others, losing the desire to communicate with leadership, have adopted a passive approach aiming to avoid mistakes. In such an environment, oversights increase, exacerbating system instability and the risk of crashes. The recent failure of Alibaba Cloud has shattered the myth of invincibility surrounding internet giant's technology. An experienced programmer with over a decade in the field points out that while the code of major domestic internet companies may have started off adequately, a decade has passed with constant product iterations and frequent personnel changes. Now the accumulation of coding issues in these internet behemoths, especially in e-commerce platforms, ride-hailing apps, and new retail services, is becoming increasingly problematic. These services feature complex functions and business models coupled with rapid product iterations. However, the project management level of these companies often fails to keep pace with development speed. This leads to high interdependency among software modules and a severe increase in system entropy. A single component's failure can trigger a global collapse, making effective repairs difficult. Fixing one issue often spawns another, evolving into uncontrollable major problems, sometimes even causing system crashes during software upgrades. The programmer boldly predicts that, in addition to Didi and Alibaba Cloud, other renowned applications like Meituan, Pinduoduo, JD.com, T3 Travel, and even WeChat could face the risk of system collapses in 2024. This risk escalates particularly with increased layoffs. He also highlighted the paradox of wealthy tech giants in China using outdated technology. For instance, Tencent used VS2006 as the Integrated Development Environment IDE, along with IBM's ClearCase for source code management in developing QQ Game Hall. Despite its robustness, ClearCase was notoriously cumbersome and Tencent had spent 30 million RMB to acquire it from IBM. QQ Game Hall itself was highly complex, with hundreds of thousands of lines of source code and numerous dynamic link libraries DLLs. Compiling the source code into an executable program took over 20 minutes. Years later, Tencent was found still using VS2006 and ClearCase. The reason was simple. Updating to a newer IDE would require solving a plethora of technical issues, and with QQ games rapidly evolving, the transition was indefinitely postponed. Switching the source code and management tool would mean losing historical logs, a critical resource for addressing rare and sudden issues. In summary, due to rapid technological advancements, many large companies continue using outdated technology to maintain business stability as it still generates steady income. Adopting new technologies, even if minor issues arise, could impact millions of users and result in substantial commercial losses. Hence, the technology used by large companies is often not as advanced as that of smaller firms. Turning to Alibaba Cloud's IPO issue, on November 16, 2022, Alibaba announced during a financial report meeting that it no longer considered spinning off Alibaba Cloud for an IPO. The reason given was that the U.S. restrictions on computing power chips as half of China's generative AI, AIGC big models, run on Alibaba Cloud, leading to significant uncertainty in its intelligence business. The decision by Alibaba Cloud to pause its IPO might be attributed to factors beyond its control. 
Given its shareholder structure involving overseas entities, Alibaba Cloud was required to list in Hong Kong. However, the Hong Kong stock market, deeply affected by the Chinese Communist Party, now sees less than 100 billion Hong Kong dollars in daily transactions, making it nearly impossible for a company of Alibaba Cloud's magnitude to float sufficient shares. Similar predicaments are faced by other companies like Didi, Luckin Coffee, and TikTok, where their Hong Kong listing plans currently stalled. Additionally, Alibaba Cloud's pause in listing also involves strategic considerations. The company may be aiming to secure more domestic government projects and operate using methods beyond market regulation. Listing would necessitate disclosing more information, such as the types of chips and servers used, which could attract international attention and potential sanctions. The plan to spin off Alibaba Cloud from Alibaba Group reflects a common trait among Chinese tech companies a focus on the commercial application of technology rather than pure innovation. For instance, Alibaba founder Jack Ma's proposal to list Alibaba Cloud was based on the reality that the traditional e-commerce model could no longer sustain the company's growth. This demonstrates the tendency of Chinese tech companies to leverage technology for profit and capital operations rather than focusing on innovation and development. With the rise of advanced foreign technologies like ChatGPT in the AI field, Chinese tech companies are attempting to emulate but lack the depth of technological accumulation and talent reserves. Chinese companies find it increasingly unfeasible to copy and replicate as their own AI models significantly lag behind ChatGPT. As the U.S. continues to decouple from China and restructure supply chains, capital and personnel within China are rapidly withdrawing. This has led to an economic downturn, a decline in foreign trade orders, and a decrease in the quality of services in everyday life. Since last year, a series of network collapses in top internet companies has affected the quality of people's daily lives. Issues with ride-hailing services, like overcharges, have made bills unacceptably high. The widely touted domestically developed technologies with complete intellectual property rights in China might become unusable if foreign investments are fully withdrawn. Many services enjoyed in mainland China today are possible due to international collaboration and business with China. The tense situation in the South China Sea, if escalated into military conflict, might lead Western companies to sever services with China. This would not only impact Didi and Alibaba Cloud, but also the banking and financial systems, communication networks, the internet, supercomputers, high-speed railways, and nuclear power stations. These systems, requiring constant maintenance and updates, might also face systemic collapse. If decoupling continues, hospitals could lose imported medicines, consumables, and spare parts for high-end diagnostic equipment, affecting the operation of CT scans and MRIs. The reliability of domestic surgical tools is also in question, potentially halting surgeries and leading to chaos. Today's relaxed white-collar workers may find it hard to smile under such circumstances. The quality of life would significantly deteriorate, and Chinese people might have to focus on mere survival rather than living. This could be a prolonged issue that Chinese citizens will need to confront in the future.